Welcome to Physics Can Be Fun with me, Stephen Thomas. Today we're looking at whether reactions are endothermic or exothermic. And we're going to do this by measuring the temperature of a reaction and then we'll show you how we tell if the reaction is endothermic or exothermic. Now let's take our old favorite sodium hydrogen carbonate, bicarb, plus CH3COOH vinegar. We're going to react the two together to form carbon dioxide, water, and sodium acetate. And we're going to measure the temperature while we do it. So here is a little thermistor attached to an electronic device. And we're going to put, this is like a little thermometer. It's been programmed to be a thermometer. Let's put it inside the glass like that. We're going to protect our glass with a plastic bag or protect in fact our electronics with a plastic bag so let's put a little plastic bag inside there and we'll put our vinegar into the glass so this is just to protect our little thermistor pour in some vinegar So our glass is half empty or half full, depending on whether you're an optimist or a pessimist. Let's switch on our thermometer and it'll take a while to settle down and then we will get a starting temperature and a final temperature. So here's how we've set it up. Change of temperatures, final temperature minus an initial temperature we're going to measure the temperature to start off with. And this thing is quite sensitive and jumps around a little bit. So we've got to let it settle down and get its um, starting temperature. 20.2 is our starting temperature. So we're looking over here and we see 20.4, 20.4, somewhere around there. It's not critical. 20.4. So let's say our initial temperature is 20,4. Now we're going to carefully add some bicarb and see if the temperature rises or decreases or increases. So it's going to foam, so I've got to be careful. Let's throw in just a little bit of bicarb at first. So it foams up. You can see it's foaming right into the bag. Look at that. And it's gone down to 18.3, 18.0, 17.5, 17.0, 16. So do you see that our temperature is coming down? Let's put a little bit more in. 15.7. Fifteen point five, fifteen point two, fifteen point two, fifteen point zero, fourteen point seven, fourteen point seven, fourteen point seven. So there's our final temperature of. 14.7. So final temperature 14,7 minus 20,4, and we will work out the difference. So we have fi final temperature 14.7 minus 20.4 equals minus 5,7. Minus 5,7 degrees centigrade. Minus 5,7 degrees centigrade. And there, it's a negative number. A negative number. Minus 5,7 degrees. Now let's try a reaction that, a different reaction. How about we try... 
dissolving sodium hydroxide. So let's get another bag. And let's put some water in it. Just plain old water and let's dissolve some sodium hydroxide in it and see what happens. So here's our water going into the bag. And let's get an initial temperature. Let the water settle down. So there is our little bag. So what we're basically doing in our second reaction is we are simply going to react sodium hydroxide and dissolve it so that it goes from a solid, sodium hydroxide solid, and it's going to form sodium ions and hydroxide ions. In, and it's going to form aqueous solution, meaning dissolved in water. Let's see if dissolving sodium hydroxide is a reaction that gives off or takes in heat. So, let's start throwing some sodium hydroxide into the water and see what happens to the temperature. 27.4, So do you see that the temperature is rising? If we were to stir this, we would see that our temperature is going to as it dissolves, it's going to get higher and higher. 42.0.01, So our temperature is going up all the time as the sodium hydroxide dissolves. And if I had to stir it a little bit, to shake it a little bit, I'm sure our temperature would go up even more. 51.0. 49.8, 49.3, Okay, so let's make it 49 was the highest that it reached. 49 degrees. So our final temperature was 49 degrees centigrade minus 25,1, and let's work out what the change in temperature was. So, 49 minus 25.1 equals positive 23.9. Let's make it 24 to round it off. 24 degrees centigrade change. Positive. Now that we've measured the temperature changes of, this, of these reactions, let's see how this relates to endothermic and exothermic. Let us, in summary, see that in the first reaction, the temperature went down. In the second reaction, the temperature went up. Now, whenever temperature changes, we have a transfer of energy called heat. So, in this case, heat disappeared from the thermometer, from the solution, and it went into the chemical reaction. Can we see that heat was transferred into the chemicals because it, the thermometer lost heat? So, if the temperature dropped here, energy was sucked out of the solution in which the reaction occurred and went into the reaction. So, heat, in fact, went in to the reaction, away from the therm thermometer, and we call that endothermic, heat in. Heat thermos, endo in, heat in. So, heat went into the reaction, and that is why we can regard heat almost as a reactant, and we could say it's on the left-hand side of the 
equation. Now, in this case, the temperature increased. So heat must have come from somewhere to go into the thermometer. Where did it come from? It came from the reaction, came out of the reaction and into the thermometer. So heat can be considered almost as a product of the reaction, heat out, and therefore we say heat out exothermic. Thermos, heat, exo, out, heat out. So here we have an exothermic reaction and here we have an endothermic reaction. Now, quite interestingly, this case where it is an endothermic reaction, we say it's delta H, change of heat, is, is positive or greater than naught. But look at that. The, ch the temperature change was negative, but its change of heat was positive. How does that occur? We'll think of it like this. Looking from the point of view of the reaction, from the point of the view of the reaction, it gained heat. Heat went in, so its change of heat was positive because it gained heat. Where did it gain heat? from the drop of temperature, including from the thermometer. So look at this. If our change of temperature and change of anything is final, minus initial, our change of temperature was negative, our change of heat, in fact this term delta H scientifically is enthalpy or internal energy at constant pressure, the internal energy actually became greater because it sucked heat out of the thermometer and out of the solution. So that is why these two signs are opposite. Change of temperature negative, delta H, change of enthalpy or change of heat, positive. Heat went into the reaction and therefore into the reaction endothermic. So in endothermic reaction, delta H, change of internal energy was positive. It gained, these chemicals gained heat. Now, if we look at this case, here, the delta H, change of enthalpy or heat, is negative, the opposite of that, or less than naught. Why? Because from the point of view of the chemicals, they started out with a certain amount of energy, they ended up with less energy, heat was given out. So that's a higher energy state than that. Our reactants had more energy than our products. So heat was given out into the solution. So the internal energy of these chemicals has decreased. So if from, from their point of view, their delta H or internal energy has decreased and as it decreased, it raise the temperature of the thermometer and its surroundings. Let's give you an example with a match. See, heat is given out. We know that because our environment, my hands are getting warmer. Air is getting warmer, but now look at the, from the point of view of the match, delta H has become negative. It has lost energy. It had more energy to start off with. So our environment got hotter. Its temperature became greater. But from the point of view of the map match, it ended up with less energy than it started. So this is an exothermic reaction. Delta H, its change of internal energy is negative. This match now has got far less energy now that it has released it and it's a piece of carbon. So that is the relationship between change of temperature and delta H. Or, and, and that is also the difference between exothermic and endothermic reactions.